Alright, we are in the book of Acts 24. Remember, we remember that Paul was seized in the temple. They did a um, little trial with him. So was going to rip him apart, beat him up for the umpteenth time. And um, they wanted to kill him, right? You remember that he purified himself. They asked him to purify himself before he went in the temple. He did it. Everything was good. You'll notice that he wasn't in the temple making a ruckus. He wasn't acting crazy. He was trying to worship his Lord, right? And the Jews don't like Paul because Paul, we remember, is part of the way or the sect. We all remember that. Um, and, you know, Paul knew some of these guys, but when Paul said he didn't know that it was the high priest, we all remember that. It was probably because of his eyes and he hasn't been there in 20 years. And the guy wasn't acting like a high priest if he struck him in the mouth. We all remember that. So, um, I have a little story. Um, I don't know if you ever heard this one. This guy was a friend of people that went to church. They asked him, hey, when do you want to go to church? The pastor asked him a whole bunch of times, do you want to go to church? And the guy said, no, when I straighten out my life, I'll make it to church. You ever heard that one? Yeah. <laughs> when I straighten out my life, I'll make it to church. And he keeps asking him and asking him. And eventually the dude dies. And the wife asks, will you do my husband's funeral? And he said, yes. Finally, the guy got straightened out, right? With rigor mortis. So don't wait till it's too late to go to church, right? <laughs> yeah, you're stiff, you're straightened um. out. <laughs> you guys like that one? Yeah. I got that from Skip. <laughs> Man of his word, yeah. He finally made it to church. He kept saying one day it'll get there. Did I miss anything? Did I miss anyone? No. Oh, one other thing. Tonight we are going to sign a piece of paper. Everybody that knows Cindy that goes to church, that goes to church here on Tuesday nights. She got into an accident. Broke her cheek, broke her, her jaw, both hands, and she's in um, UMC right now. She was going down to Mexico with the Bling Divas. We don't know what happened. She was kind of like on a straightaway. All of a sudden, people looked in their mirror, and she was off in the road, off on the dirt, trying to hold it together. And all of a sudden, she was chucked off the bike and got messed up. She was out for like five, ten minutes. Took 20 minutes for them to get to the spot they were at in the desert by needles. So let's keep her in prayer. We're going to sign a letter, I mean a piece of paper tonight. We're going to fold it up and put it in a card tomorrow and get it to her. A um, couple people that probably remembered Frank with the long black hair that came in here. He OD'd this weekend. The guy that used to come with Dennis. So pray for his family. And um, that's about it. So we'll get on to Acts 24. I'm going to read um, Acts 23, 31, and then start 24, if you don't mind. Then the soldiers, as they were commanded, took Paul and brought him by night to Artipers. Artem How do you say the name? Artipers. Where are you, honey? Oh, you started. 2331. Oh, sorry. I didn't know. Okay, sorry. The next day they left the horsemen to go on with him and return to the barracks. When they came to Caesarea, they had delivered the letter to the governor. They also presented Paul to him. And when the governor had read it, he asked, What providence was he from and they and when he understood that he was from Cilicia, Cilicia he said I will hear you when your accusers have come and he had commanded him to be kept in Herod's Praetorium 
And we remember that, that it wasn't like a prison. He was out in the in Herod's like castle. He got probably put in one area of it and he was not bound because he couldn't have been bound without until he was proven guilty. It's kind of like it used to be in the United States, you're innocent before you're proven, I mean, you're innocent before you're proven guilty. But so that's why we all remember that, that he wasn't bound because he's a Roman citizen. You can't bound a Roman citizen. Now after five days, Ananias, the high priest, came down with the elders and a certain author, orator named tumultuous these gave evidence to the governor against Paul so if we look at this dude this was a high, hired Roman that was probably Jewish at the same time and um, he is like the prosecutor that's gonna present charges against Paul and when he was called upon tumultuous how do you say it? Tortolas. Tortolas began his accusation saying, seeing, seeing that through you we have great peace and prosperity is being brought to this nation by your foresight. We expect it always and in all places most noble Felix with all thanks given. Now that right there was a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> Did you see how he started out his accusation and his presenting it? And Felix was no good. Felix was a slave before, freed, and became a governor. And he was treacherous. He was not a nice governor. He would do rotten things to people, and especially for money. And we're going to figure that out in a little bit. That he was a no good man. He wasn't one of those great... And if you... We're going to look at his history and his wife's history, and you're going to see it goes all the way back to Herod the king that ordered to kill baby Jesus. If you guys have read the Bible, you'll understand that Herod the king said, kill all the firstborn. That's why Jesus and his family left the town that they were in. So we'll see that tonight too. But this guy is, he's, both of them are no good. You know what I mean? If you've ever been to court, you'll see how it works. It's all a bunch of nonsense. Amen? Yeah. On both sides. <coughs> little kissing butt right there. Did you see it? <laughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> not to be tumultuous, tedious. tedious, I mean, to you any further, I beg you to hear by your courtesy a few words from us for we have found this man a plague a creator of dissension among all the Jews throughout the world and ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes we even tried to what he even tried to profane the temple and we seized him and wanted to judge him according to our law. But the commander Lysias came by and with, a, with great violence took him out of our hands, commanding his accusers to come to you by examining him yourself. You may ascertain, ascertain all these things of which we accuse him. And the Jews also... Ascended, assented. what? Yeah, assented. Assented, maintaining that these things were so. And if we were read, and we read before, you'll notice that none of that happened. Paul was not making a ruckus. Do you see that? These are all lies. This ain't no Perry Mason stuff, right? These are all lies. Ten. Then Paul, after, after the governor had motioned to him to speak, answering, Inasmuch as I know that you have been for many years a judge of this nation, I do the more carefully answer for myself, because you may 
ascertain. ascertain that it is no more than 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem to worship. You notice he didn't say, you excellent Felix, you this, you that. He just directed him straight up, right? Because he knew exactly who he was. And they neither found me in the temple disrupting, disputing with anyone, nor inciting a crowd either in the synagogue or in the city. Paul's telling it like it is right there. Nor can they prove the things of which they now accuse me, but this I confess to you that according to the way which they call a sect, so I worship the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. I like that right there. That he says that he believes in all that, right? He worships it. I'm going to ask you a question tonight, people that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you believe in everything in this Word? Because there's in this Word, you cannot pick or choose. You can't go, well, this fits my life easy, and that fits my life easy, and that's really hard, so I'm going to spit that out, and I'm not going to believe in that. That's not how this works. Either you believe in the first part of the Bible all the way to the rear, or you don't. Right? Amen? That's right. That's how we have to believe, because this is God's written Word. We have to believe it from start to finish and everything in it, and have the Spirit teach us and to obey it. I have hope in God, which they themselves also expect, except that there will be a resurrection of the dead and of the just and the unjust. This is being so. I myself always strive to have a conscience without offense toward God and men. I like that right there because there's going to be a judgment of the living and dead. Right or wrong? Right? There, us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to reign with the Lord forever. Those who do not have the Lord Jesus Christ are going to die. And they're going to go to the lake of fire. It's just a fact. There's one person that spoke most, the most of hell in the Bible, and that is Jesus himself. That's right. It's a guaranteed fact. He didn't play around. When we're talking to people, we shouldn't play around with them. We shouldn't be saying this... Oh, Jesus is just a loving, caring hippie and He just wants you to come to Him and you could just hang out with Him and it's all going to be good and you could do whatever the hell you want to do. It doesn't work that way. Right? That's what some of these people are preaching in these churches. That Jesus is just all loving. He's just a sweet... I don't know, I read the end of the book. He's not coming back very happy. <laughs> So the dead will be judged as well. But I love that Paul tells them about the resurrection. Because everything is about the resurrection. Right or wrong? Seventeen. Now after many years I came to bring all I mean after many years I came to bring alms and offerings to my na to my nation. He was getting a collection from all the people and bringing it up to the temple. Paul wasn't doing anything wrong. In the midst of which some Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with a mob nor with tumult. Tumult, meaning he wasn't acting crazy. That's what I got out of that. I love that right there. He's letting them know. And the Jews that said I was doing this aren't even here. Mm -hmm. His accusers aren't even, even in this courtroom right now. They ought to have been here before you to object if they had anything against me. 
or else let these who are here themselves say if they found any wrongdoing in me while I stood before the council unless it is for the one statement which I cried out standing among them concerning the resurrection of the dead I am being judged by you this day uh, we remember what happened with that half the room was agreeing with them the Pharisees were agreeing with them and the Sadducees were disagreeing 22 but when Felix heard these things having more accurate knowledge of the way he adjourned and proceeded and said, When Ulysses, the commander, comes down, I will make a decision on your case. Now, like I just explained in the first part of this, he knew about the way. Because if you look at all these um, governors and you look at the king, he's related, I mean, he's married to his, one of his granddaughters, Herod's granddaughter. They were all related. Uh, I will make a decision on your case. So he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty and told him not to forbid any of his friends to provide for or his visit. 24. And after some days, when Felix came with his wife, Dursel, Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Now as he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and judgment to come, Felix was afraid and answered, Go away for now. When I have a convenient time, I will call for you. I like that right there. Who should be the one that should be afraid right now? Should it be Paul? No, it's Felix. Because they were reasoning about it, and Felix knew about this because of his wife, like I just said. <coughs> we'll break this down tonight, but I love that, that Felix was afraid. Felix, in other translations, said that he was trembling. Because he knew his faith, he knew where he was going to go. Right? I don't know if you ever seen, it, it's a little off subject, anybody ever seen a Seinfeld episode where Elaine is with this, with her boyfriend, and then they go outside in the hallway, and he's a Jew, and he can't steal of this paper, right? He goes, ah, oh, she goes, just grab it. He goes, no, you grab it, you know where you're going when you die. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, but <laughs> Felix knew because he knew of Jesus. He knew of the resurrection. He'd been around. He governed another part in Judea, I think it was, for six years. Knowing that this dude was a slave and he got freed and then they made him a governor. I like that that he said when he has convenient time, I will call for you. Right? Like, go away for now. I don't want to hear no more. Meanwhile, he also hoped that money would be given him by Paul that he might release him. Therefore, he sent for him more often and conversated with him. But after two years, Portus, how do you say that word? Um, <coughs> Porcius. Porcius Festus. Succeeded. What? Succeeded Felix. Succeeded, succeeded Felix. And Felix wanted to do the Jews a favor, left Paul bound, meaning in the where he was jailed. See how crooked that is? Now don't think, because you're a Christian, that people ain't going to come against you. They hated Jesus, they're going to hate us. Amen? And things are going to happen to us. People are going to give false accusations. I remember, and I'll, and I'll stop and then I'll open it up. I remember years ago, people said the only reason, the only reason Kenny has a Bible study, the only reason Kenny has a Bible study is because he makes money off the Bible study. I'm like, okay, 
if you ever see, I'm just gonna say I wanted to tell them I said if you had a problem with me should have at least looked in the basket people thought back in the day at the shop I didn't even take an offering until this old lady told me to take an offering because I was denying people their um, gift and I said you want to look in the basket it looks like an AA meeting everybody thinks they're paying for a coffee it was like a dollar a piece I don't know how much money we were making but you know what I mean it wasn't true and that's just going to happen to any of us. We're always going to get persecuted for walking with Jesus. We're always going to get persecuted because people do not like Jesus. Because He represents death to them. With that, I'll open it up. Paul defends himself. He still finds the opportunity to speak the Gospel. Through all this. And as we continue to read on, as he stands before the different uh, kings or governors in position, we see that he always defends himself but emphasizes on the gospel and the resurrection. It never stops all the way through. He, that door of opportunity is there for him to speak, and he uses it. Paul knew where he was going. We read in the next scriptures, Paul knew that he was on his way to Rome. It's a fact. Jesus had told him. The Spirit told him that you are going to Rome. He didn't change his course whatsoever. And there was times that the Lord had to encourage him, just like us. <coughs> it's going to be hard to serve the Lord at times. It ain't going to always be easy. And sometimes we create our own little madness. Go ahead, you're on line one, Danny. It seems to me that in the last several months, a channel has been flipped or a, a, an evil has overcome and taken over our country. And the men and women that are in control of our country now are ungodly and, and have, have become as evil as these past rulers. And it seems like to me that we're on trial now and that we as believers in this nation are, are up against it like Paul was in, in the early days. And I think it's going to even get worse. But it's amazing to me how ungodly these people are, seemingly to me, without any conscience. Praise God. Praise God that and it'll burn off the nonsense that's in our life. Right. That's it'll make us stronger. Because the main thing is if you're a total believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, the thing that I love what Russ says all the time, he says like this, today is a good day, Lord. I look at it like this, what are you going to do, kill me? Exactly. I already died once. Right? right. We all died. Or born again, you can't kill me. You can only kill my body. That's the way Paul knows it. Paul's seen the third heaven. Or said he knows a man that's seen it. So here's the cool thing. Once you know the Lord Jesus Christ, nothing. you got nothing to lose. You got nothing to lose. Zero. Anybody else? Um, the Jewish leaders are the ones that hired the attorney. So as he's as he's speaking highly of Felix, it's basically kind of smoothing him over to help him to sway their way against Paul. I think that, um, I think as you brought up Seinfeld earlier, I think this is kind of like the Blues Brothers. They're on a mission from he's on a mission from God. There's no stopping it. He's going to see Caesar. Along the way, he's going to proclaim Jesus to everybody that he can. And, and Felix was hoping that that as he was able to commingle with his friends and those that came to help him, they were going to pad his pocket with money so he could just kick him free. Well, that didn't happen. He had to have been getting frustrated because he said all the more often he would bring Paul in to sit down with him, hoping he was going to get a little this action going on and, and it never happened over and over again had to be a little bit frustrating so he finally just handed him over to the next guy in line but it's like inevitably 
leading up to this, Paul knew there was a call on his life, knew where he was going, knew where it was going to end. There wasn't nothing that was going to change that. And that's the attitude we should have. Absolutely. That's the attitude that we should have as Christians. Knowing, I hear people I've said in this room, well, I don't know what I should do for Jesus. Excuse me? Do you even know Jesus? Let's get for real. What is your mission? Preach. To get as many people as you can off the most wanted list. There's so all these people that are dying and lost, they're on the most wanted list. It's the way you should look at it, right? And we're going to tell them about Jesus and we're going to show them, we're going to speak the gospel every single day and sometimes use words. And believe me, we ain't going to do it perfect every day. Everybody have a job in here? You're not going to be perfect every day, believe me, because I'm not. I'm perfect in Christ, though. Anybody else? Miss Jack. This gentleman was uh, talking about how crazy people have gotten, this world has gotten. And um, ironically, this morning in my uh, devotion, I, I was reading uh, in John 15. And so ironic, it says, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet, because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Uh, remember that uh, the word that said, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute us. So, I mean, it's like, this is not a uh, easy peasy. And I think most, that's why the word says, why is the gate that leads to destruction? And many there be that now, you know, find it. And narrow is the way that leads to life and few. Because people don't, we don't want to suffer. Things, you know, people are worried about what's going on. But we have to remember God already, He knows the end at the beginning. So, it's going, they're going, I mean, they're going to hate us. So, we just Amen. have to, you know, suck it up and be ready for it. Yeah. Oh. Felix had his opportunity to find that narrow path, and he was convicted. He was convicted knowing that he had taken another man's wife, and just everything about him, he was convicted. And he kept putting it off, you know, procrastinating, and uh, didn't turn out well for Felix. He did have a good opportunity. And uh, I like how Paul, like uh, Russ had said that, you know, Felix knew that he had a sack of money because he, he said that he did. He came to give alms or alms to the to the poor churches in, in that in that area. And uh, even for his own freedom, he wasn't he wasn't gonna pony up a, a couple of bucks you know, to old Uncle Felix here, and, you know, to smooth things out. You know, it's like everybody's saying. Paul was on a mission. He knew exactly where he was going. So he knew what he knew the character of Felix. <coughs> he knew uh, he was not a good man. And uh, rumor has it, well, not rumor, but it's historic. Historians have said that uh, when he was called to Rome, if it hadn't have been for his connections, he would have been put to death for his corruption. And, uh, that's just uh, that's a side note. But. Procrastination, like you said, the, the man who kept his word in church he, 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 and went straighten out before you know, and then come to and then come to church. <coughs> exactly what he did. <laughs> the thing is, is he wouldn't repent of what he did, and he's talking about his wife. That guy went and took her when she was 16. She was already married, and then he found her attractive and stole her from the other man. It was his, her second marriage. His third. So, um, you know, he was dirty all around, and all the Jews were dirty. 
Anybody else? You got something, and woman? On that, on that same note, no doubt, Paul was telling him about covetous, uh, about coveting, and and you can't you can't do it by the law because the law it, it show it's a you know it, it's just a schoolmaster to show you you can't do it. So no doubt he was convicted on that, but not. But the sin of all sins is rejecting um, the Lord Jesus Christ. I really. Uh, was looking at chapter, uh, verse 15 I have hope in God which they themselves also accept that there will be a resurrection of the dead both of the just and the unjust and like Kenny was saying um, yeah, there was, there's going to be a day where we're all going to be judged us for our works and the things that we did with, with what we were given so it won't be the same kind of judgment it'll be more of a, a wards assembly but we're still going to get you know be called to what we did with what we were given and then the unjust and uh, and then it says in 16 this being so this is a scripture that really stuck out to me I myself always strive to have a conscience without offense toward God and men and that really covers the the two commandments love God with all your mind body heart and soul which you have to do first of you know going up and then across Speaking of the cross, um, laterally and horizontally, men forgiving uh, forgiving all men. So if you, if you don't love God first, you're not going to be able to do love your neighbor as yourself. But with that being said, loving God with all your mind, body, heart, and soul. I mean, for me personally, I remember that was the that's the thing that I prayed when I well I found out what was important to God, and those two things were important to God: love God with all your mind, body, heart, and soul love your neighbor as yourself. So I didn't have that on my own, so I prayed that, and I still do, every single day, because I need to. Because <laughs> without that, we don't have a good conscience before God and man. And um, with that, we walk in repentance and bear good fruit. And, and, it's, and, and we forgive ourselves. We're, we're, not even hard, we're not even hard on ourselves because we know that that we stumble, we know that we forgive ourselves, we know that, well, we know that God forgives us, which makes it easy not only to forgive ourselves, but to forgive others, because we're the same kind of offenders. So I thought that really uh, was something that stuck out to me, and such a, such a simple, su such a simple prayer for any of us to pray daily, to stay conscience with a clear conscience, just to help me God to love you with all my mind, all my heart, and all my soul, and love my neighbors as myself, which and mean it, and he will do that, and that's everything in a nutshell. And then <clears throat> 23, so he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty and told him not to forbid any of his friends to provide for a visit. I love that because, you know, like Bertie was saying, well, here he, he's getting favor, it seems, you know, in his state, but Paul's, uh, Paul used these opportunities. This, this isn't, isn't only that he used the opportunities. He, he was living for the opportunity to stand up in front of people that didn't believe that he was like before he you know, fell off the horse or got knocked off the horse. He's, that was his heart's desire to sit in a courtroom or wherever in front of people and be accused of insurrection but that wasn't the case but to, to tell the truth about what God has done and that'll strengthen us that'll strengthen us when and if because like you guys were saying the oh, times are who's ever had a black shirt? Okay. Um, the times are uh, so so evil right now that anything could happen where the Christians are considered the ins insurrectionists right now I mean, they always were, but now we're just, you know, we're the, we're the enemy because the elite and the people that are running our country and that are running the big corporations and that are running media and big pharma, they're, they're all in the, same, in the same bag and they, they're ruling right now and we are, we represent death to them and like you guys were saying, and um, so I, I, I put myself in the position, I mean, in my mind, what if, what if, 
I want that strength that Paul had. I want to confess amongst the people when, when and if they're taking me somewhere where I don't want to go. This is the truth, the light, and the way, you know, and, and have that strength and that stamina. And, you know, that's going to take having a clear conscience towards God and man, and it's also going to take uh, praying in the Spirit, praying and having the Holy Spirit um, as we're in those situations. And um, the, the days are short. And when I hear Russ saying, today's a good day, I hear him saying, today's a good day to come get me. <laughs> but I don't know what he means by it. But I think it goes both ways. It's double-sided. Yeah, I was thinking about Felix when it says, like in the King James, it says he trembled. And I think what was going on is because Paul was speaking in the power of the Holy Spirit, that the conscience that Felix had killed, or thought he killed or subdued, started to rise up. You know, and it's like there was an opportunity for him to repent. But he pushed it, he pushed it away, he sent Paul away because of the words that he spoke, because their truth started to stir up and resurrect that conscience of his. And knowing all the wicked things that he's done in his life, he didn't want all that stuff to come up, so he sent Paul away to stop the resurgence of his conscience. So he gave, gave himself time to try to submerge it again, I guess. And, you know, but that's what happens when you hear the Word of God. When you hear words of the Spirit, they start stirring up stuff that's been hidden for a long time. And, it, and it's stuff that needs to come up anyway. And I, I really think he had an opportunity to repent right there, but he resisted it. Yeah, so do I. That's what I... And that happens to a lot of people that have been introduced to God, right? You know, they see us. I love this, and me and Wayne will be cruising before, and other people, and people will see me downtown Henderson. Everybody knows me. I've told them about the Lord Jesus Christ. And they'll be walking down the street and trying to fig leave and hide. I'm like, I'm not God. <laughs> I mean, I've seen people kind of like do this. And I'll be like, hey! Out the window, they're like, Oh, hey, Kenny. I'm like, and I point up like this, and I go like this. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, just let God do His thing in you, and I'll tell you what, it's a lot easier than fighting it. You know what I mean? We're going to get persecuted by the world if you're just half stepping it. It's going to be because you're going to be on yourself too. Same thing. Things happen like that. Just get right with the Lord now. And you don't have to be tripping on all that stuff. And just be transparent. Look, I'm a mess. But I'm God's mess. And I'm repenting every day and trying to turn from all the madness that I do create in my own head. You know, I love this. Like Just like A or NA, man. Don't go in that neighborhood. Because you're going to get jumped. You know, we've... Re he, it says right there, self-control. You know what exactly what Paul was telling him. He was laying it down. And Felix was like, that's enough. Be on your way, big boy. Our little guy with a bald head and ugly eyes and unibrow. unibrow. Yeah. I heard that he had a unibrow. I'm going to let you go in a minute. I heard that he had a unibrow. That's why I said that that day, right? Can you imagine this little dude so powerful, ugly Paul? Right? He wasn't attracted after he'd been stoned, beat up, whipped, all this madness. Coming up, telling the governor, look, you need to repent. Else you're going to the smoking section. <laughs> you're not going to the non-smoke. You know, just like he said, oh. And you feel it, but you push that off long enough, and God ain't going to be there after a while. God's going to allow you to do what you want to do. He's a gentleman like that. He ain't gonna he he'll keep wooing you. But one day it's just You know, I heard a lot of people tell me this and I'll let Jen go, but I just don't feel God. Really? 
It's not a feeling. You know what I'm saying? It's not something you feel, oh, I just feel really good. I got God. <laughs> ha, you're walking, oh, man, it's just so great. I, I feel God. We can feel the Holy Spirit. We know all that. But I'm talking about like, I just don't feel like He's there with me. We'll dig in a little deeper. How do we get to know Him? By reading His Word. How do we get to know His character? By reading His Word. How do we get more convicted? By reading His Word. It's a fact. It makes it easier. Go ahead, woman, and then we're going to... I was just going to talk about repentance because we keep bringing up repentance. and It's, it's not just, um, just so we know that how to keep um, clean and our conscience is clear. It, it's important to understand and, and realize that it's not just sex, drugs, and rock and roll that we need to repent from. There's fear, anxiety, procrastination, laziness, um, self-condemnation, uh, unforgiveness, uh, pride, hate. So there's so many other things that seem like, oh, it's okay, it's only hate, it's only unforgiveness, it's only... And those are the things um, that will separate us from God, and if we're not aware of what those things are, then we won't we won't repent and then we'll get a little bit harder and harder and we'll get that distance and the great thing that I learned and it, it learned over the years is in the beginning if I wanted to repent of something I I would go and re- repent and I know I was going to do the thing again because we like sin and and I didn't I didn't know how to not do that but now um, what I what what now, in, as, in a ma- more mature relationship, I love to go before the Lord in honesty and say, Lord, you know I like this. I don't want to repent. Make me willing, like we've talked about, make me willing to repent from this thing that does not please you. And, and a couple times um, I've gone to him, and then I'm just telling you my experience because it's so freeing. And just be real, God, I, you're going to have to convince me because I am not convinced and this thing is still working for me, and you have to take it. And man, he he will. There's no fig leaf anymore. There's nothing between you. That's it's not like you put it off on him. He wants it, and he will do the rest. He will do the rest if you're willing to be honest with him and look him in the eye and say, "Daddy, I can't do this on my own. I don't even want to. Do it for me. Do do it in me and through me." And he is faithful. And then you can go in the next day, even if it's not taken yet. And Dad, it's still, I need you. Pray for my wife, would you? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I know that. I'm, that's awesome. it's, yeah, that's what we've been taught. Willingness. That's the key right there. Because you could go and lie all you want. He knows your heart. He knows who you are, right? Like you go, you know, and just men have a different relationship than women with God. We've went over that before in this room. He knows exactly who we are. He knows our minds. He knows everything about us. So why go in there half half measures phony? Yeah. Ask him to make you willing to change. He'll do it. He'll put things in your life, and I'll tell you what, bro. He'll make you willing because it won't taste that good after a while. It'll be so hard. So anyway, anybody got anything else? Any final words? Do you think we covered 24?